my name is Eddie Smith. I am the lead technologist here at the Sleep Center at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital. Patients usually go to their physicians with complaints of daytime sleepiness. Um, their partners are telling them that they're snoring heavily, disrupting their sleep, um, and they come to the conclusion that they would like to have a sleep study done. Um, from there, the doctor's office does the insurance verifications to make sure that it's you no know, prior approval is needed. Um, and then they call me and set up a time to have the sleep study done. We do the exact same sleep study that you would have done in Peoria, Springfield, Bloomington, or in any other larger cities. It's the exact same equipment, it is the exact same study. The benefit of having it done here at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital is it's right here. You don't have to travel anywhere for it. We can do sleep studies during the day, just the same exact sleep study that you would have done at night. It's just for third shift workers who normally get off work at six or seven o'clock in the morning and their normal sleep time is from eight in the morning until four o'clock in the afternoon. And we can do those on Mondays and Tuesdays. There's some days of the week that we can't do them because those rooms are being used for um, EEGs or echocardiograms or something like that. But we can always accommodate the patient. I can come in on the weekends and take care of it if they can only do it on the weekend. Um, but most of our studies are done in the evening. We do two patients a night. The first patient arrives at 8.30 and the second patient arrives at 10. So even if you're a late sleeper, if you're not used to going to bed until after 10 or 11 o'clock, we can accommodate you. We don't expect you to go to bed at 8.30 if you normally go to bed at 11. So I usually call about a week before and let them know that their appointment's coming up and make sure that they don't have any questions. If they do, I'm there to answer it. I am a technologist. I've done this for almost 14 years now. So anything that they have questions about, I can answer. If they need other special things that they need for their sleep study, such as a fan or uh, an extra blanket or pillows or a place for their spouse to sleep while they're here because they can't be left at home alone, I can make sure that those arrangements are taken care of before they get here. We ask them to bring their own bed clothes, um, t-shirt and shorts for the guys, women, same, same thing. We try to avoid nightgowns just because some of the leads have to go on their chest. So we don't wanna have to lift up the nightgown to get to it. It's just more comfortable for the women if we have two piece, you know, top and bottoms. Um, we try to avoid anything that's silky or satiny. The belts, the respiratory belts that go across the chest and the abdomen slide across that material and they don't stay in position. Um, so we have them avoid that. We have, I've had grown-ups bring teddy bears with them. Um, whatever it takes to be comfortable. If you want to bring a teddy bear, if you want to bring a blanket from home, you want to bring your own pillow, your body pillow, whatever you need to be comfortable, you're more than welcome to. We do have fans inside the room. Some people want the fan for white noise. If it, they're used to sleeping with a fan at home to drown out their kids or whoever's watching TV out in the living room, we provide those for you. But if you want to bring your own fan because it has a very specific sound to it, that's totally fine as well. Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital has made it really easy for us. The rooms are dark, the, the, they're clean, they're carpeted, they have regular furniture inside of them, which automatically makes the patient sleep better than they would anywhere else. There is a TV in the room if they need something to help relax them during the setup. However, when it's time to start the sleep study, the TV has to go off. The reason for that is because whenever we fall asleep, there's different stages of sleep. Um, there's light sleep, there's deep sleep, and then there's dream sleep. Um, whenever the TV is on, yes, you're asleep, but every time the voice changes, every time it goes to commercial and the volume changes, it causes microarousals in your sleep pattern. And those microarousals happening continuously prevents you from getting into that deeper stage of sleep. So, have you slept all night long? Yes. Were you anywhere past you know, stage two sleep when there's four stages? Maybe not. It usually takes about 45 minutes to get a patient set up for a test. We do an EEG, which means that we have to measure their head to find out where the electrodes go on their head. Um, that's kind of time consuming to get the exact locations where the, the leads are gonna go. Um, Dr. Kakamani mentioned that there's 30 leads involved in a sleep study. It takes about 45 minutes to get them all attached. We've got to prep the skin surface and get rid of all the dead skin cells so that we've got a good connection off of live skin where the electrodes go. 
and we like to talk. So sometimes it takes 45 minutes just to get through the conversation and kind of really interview the patient and find out what their habits are and what their real, real problem is. It's amazing how much we can actually come up with with technicians to find out what the patient's sleep problem is that they don't tell their doctor, but they'll tell us. There are a remarkable amount of people that are afraid to come in and have a sleep study done because they think that we're going to be staring at them all night long. The truth of the matter is there is, a there is a camera in the room and it is being recorded. However, on my 19 inch screen, the video on my sleep study is about two by two square in the top right hand corner. The only time we look up at that screen is to determine which side you've moved to, whether you've moved to your right side or your left side, or if you're on your stomach or on your back, because it's important for us to document and be able to tell the physicians, well, their apnea was worse on their back or their apnea was worse on their right side. So we have to document what position they're in. Other than that, I'm looking at a bunch of squiggly lines on the screen. I'm looking at your heart rhythm. I'm looking at your respiratory rate. I'm looking at your EEG patterns and your brain activity. We're not really looking at you at all. The only time we glance up is to see what position you're in. I'm David Helm. Well, for the longest time, I was uh, tired all the time of finding myself needing a nap. Whether I wanted to or not, I had to have one, or I just couldn't function. And sometimes I'd wake up, uh, like I'd take a nap after work, get home, fall asleep, and it would be 7.30 when I wake up, and I don't know if it's in the morning or the evening. Like one time I actually got up, put on clothes, after a nap, went to work, it was still nighttime. So I thought it was the next day. Um, so I was just in and out of a daze, basically. So the process here at the hospital was really easy. You just came in and, and Becky walked me through everything. And um, it was just a really comfortable experience. One night, I used the machine. I was up 6 a.m., ready to go. And since then, I wake up every morning and I can't fall back asleep. I'm ready to go. I feel a ton better, honestly. It has changed my life, and that was, a, that was the whole goal, you know.